Uh, let's check out how the campaign is going for Kamala Harris. I mean, they cannot buy a break. We're three weeks from today, right? Three weeks to go. There's Tim Wall saying, look at me, I'm a hunter. And, of course, all the inevitable comparisons to Elmer Fudd were made, and the guy couldn't properly load his gun. He couldn't load his weapon. It was so bad, so cringy, so embarrassing. Honestly, they can't buy a break. So now they bring out their big guns, their heavy hitters, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. Well, we already know what Barack Obama said. He's, he's nagging and scolding black men. The brothers. The brothers don't have the energy they're supposed to have. That's because the brothers, they just don't like her. They're just not into her, Mr. Obama. And then they got Bill Clinton. Slick Willie's out on the campaign trail. And boy, what a move this was. Here he was in rural Georgia bringing up the image of Lakin Riley. Lakin Riley, as you know, was a beautiful young woman who was brutally killed by an illegal immigrant. And plenty of people have said, correctly I might add, that if we had a secure border, if we had a administration, a Biden-Harris administration that took the border seriously, maybe she'd be alive. Well, let's check in on the campaign trail and hear what Bill Clinton had to say about that. You had a case in Georgia not very long ago, didn't you? They made an ad about, about a young woman who'd been killed by an immigrant. Yeah, well, if they'd all been properly vetted, that probably wouldn't have happened. What? You're supposed to help her, not hurt her. I'm, <laughs> I mean, can you believe that? You think he's he's sabotaging? Incidentally, I, I can't uh, I can't forget the clip that uh, speaking of me wearing a mask like a like a like a Tim Waltz wannabe. Bad enough that he's out there on the can out there uh, with a photo op, not being able to properly load his weapon. Check out what he said. This is back during COVID, during 2020. This is the guy that Kamala Harris thought would help her with male voters. Many things are different this year amid COVID-19, but Minnesotans can still enjoy the sport of hunting. The Minnesota pastime that for generations has connected us with the outdoors. This year, to keep things safe, just make sure you mask up, stay socially distanced, and hunt in small groups of family or friends you're with. Best of luck for a safe and successful hunt. Minnesota, I'll see you out there. Yeah, uh, that's normal. Go hunting with your mask on. Outside. I think you hunt outside last time I checked. He's like one of those freaks that walks around or drives around in a car with the windows closed and two masks on while they're driving. That's Tim Walsh. Can you imagine that guy a heartbeat away from the presidency that's the guy that they're trying to win over men with here's jesse waters making fun of uh, waltz having a very difficult time and again this was totally staged oh look at me i'm a i'm a manly man i'm out hunting and then they had the photo the the cameras rolling and he couldn't load the weapon he was having all kinds of trouble fumbling and bumbling with the shotgun and Jesse Waters properly called him out. So my shooting instructor says the bolt release and the safety are on the right side. It was a right-handed shotgun, and Walls was holding it left-handed. That's why he was struggling. He said he clearly has no clue what he's doing. Walls spent two hours in the woods, no one hit a single bird, and Walls never once pulled the trigger. This was the one reason Harris hired him, to handle a shotgun, and he couldn't do it. Again, Earth Logic says Trump wins easily in three weeks, but I don't trust the polls. Do you? 800 655 Mike, 15 past the hour. We're in the Relief Factor Studios. Tuesday, October 15th, three weeks away. You ready? I can't believe how badly things are going for them. Between Obama scolding black men, he's supposed to be campaigning for her and trying to win over black voters, 
to Tim Walsh fumbling around with his shotgun on the cringy, you know, photo uh, photo op of him pheasant hunting. He couldn't, he didn't know how the gun worked apparently. To Bill Clinton, I can't get over Bill Clinton. This one amazes me. And of course, social media blew up, and political observers went just ape you know what because this does not sound like a guy who's campaigning for the democrat candidate the democrat candidate who was the border czar the democrat candidate who was responsible for border security the democrat candidate one could argue is responsible for a lot of innocent lives being lost it's not a it's not melodramatic to say that Kamala and Joe Biden's open border policies have led to the deaths of numerous American citizens, and it's not a stretch to say they have blood on their hands. That's not hyperbole. If you don't have a border, you don't have a country. If you don't have sovereignty, what what does the country stand for? So here's Bill Clinton with his goofy Harris Walsh camouflage baseball cap on, looking very bad, by the way. I hope hope he's going to be okay. I mean, he, he looks like he's in bad shape physically. Maybe he's just not aging as gracefully as, uh, as Trump is or his wife, I guess, for that matter. But check out what, what Bill Clinton actually said on the campaign trail. You had a case in Georgia not very long ago, didn't you? They made an ad about it, about a young woman who'd been killed by an immigrant. Yeah, well, if they'd all been properly vetted, that probably wouldn't have happened. What? Now, he is a smart politician. There's no way he makes a mistake like that. There's no way that's a slip-up. He knows how our side has eviscerated Kamala over the border. He's not oblivious to that. He did it on purpose. That, that was no accident. He did that intentionally. He's absolutely trying to sabotage her campaign. What do you think they're saying behind the scenes at the Kamala campaign headquarters? Maybe it's not such a good idea to send Bill Clinton out on the campaign trail after all. I mean, Donald Trump Jr. posted, even Slick Willie knows that border czar Kamala Harris is responsible for allowing the illegal alien who murdered Lake and Riley into our country. The only plausible explanation is that this is a 3D chess move to get Democrats to drop Kamala in the waning days and substitute in crooked Hillary. That's what Jason Miller posted and said she's running. Now, look, you could say that's crazy all day long. Many of you said it was crazy that they would replace Joe Biden the way they did. And they did. Nothing's going right for them. Check out how CNN's Harry Enten, their their numbers guy, reported on black voter support for Donald Trump. I mean, the bottom line is this. At this particular hour, if you believe the polling, uh, Donald Trump's going to put up the best performance with black voters since Richard Nixon back in 1960. Not 68 since 1960. That's 64 years ago. Among Hispanic voters, Donald Trump's going to put up the best performance for Republicans since 2004 and George W. Bush. Here's NBC reporting on the surge that Trump has gotten in the polls the last few weeks. The timing of our poll is really instructive here. And when our September poll came out and had Harris with a five-point lead over Donald Trump, that, of course, was after the debate. It was after a really rough news environment for Donald Trump with the discussion about Springfield, Ohio. And now, all of a sudden, we do show a tied race. And what has occurred is that uh, those soft Republicans, non-MAGA Republicans, have come back home to Trump. The soft Republicans, the non-MAGA Republicans, have come back home to Trump. 
Here's NBC's Mark Murray talking about Trump leading Harris on the issue of illegal immigration. And so, you know, Donald Trump is, is leaning into the immigration issue because this is his strongest argument. Our poll shows him having a 25 point edge over Harris when it comes to which candidate is better when it comes to immigration and the border discussion. And so Donald Trump is uh, going right into his strengths. Finally, here's Jesse Waters kind of summing up the state of affairs right now for the Kamala Harris campaign. Democrats haven't felt this badly since Biden bombed the debate. The party is leaking like crazy. Anxiety, despair is the mood in Washington. The Harris campaign is stuck in the mud. And behind the scenes, Democrats are worried she stalled. And her so-called lead has evaporated. Vice President Kamala Harris had a five-point lead in our last poll taken a month ago, right after the debate. That lead has all but evaporated, Willie. Take a look at this new head-to-head matchup. 48% to 48%. That is what we call a deadlocked race. At this point in the election, Hillary was up seven. Biden was up nine. The betting markets of Trump's chance of winning is better than 50-50. And the battlegrounds are all tied up. So, here we go. You ready for the ride? Three weeks away. We're three weeks from today. Welcome aboard. It's Tuesday. And uh, we're glad you could be with us here in the Relief Factor Studios. Our number is 800-655-MIKE, 800-655-6453. Do you think Bill Clinton just slipped up? Do you think he accidentally said what he said? Maybe he thought there wouldn't be any cameras rolling? Why would Bill Clinton throw Kamala Harris under the bus like that? There are no accidents to that guy. There's no accidents with him. He knows exactly what he's doing. I think Jason Miller could be right. Call me crazy all you want. I was the guy that told you they were going to kick Biden to the curb, and a lot of you said no way. If they think they'll lose with Kamala... You think they can't you you don't think they're they're capable of pulling another rabbit out of their hat? 800-655-6453. I hope you join us. <laughs> 